Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. He is wonderful. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. Who all going to heaven? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Y'all say y'all going. Y'all better live like it. It's, it's, it's okay to think it, but you better make sure you know it. Amen. Mark chapter 11. See, y'all going. I'm already there. Mark. I'm already. <laughs> Wait, see, I got a trunk. That's right. I got, got an ace in the hole. Y'all don't know nothing about it. See, I, I, used to, I used to gamble and I used to cheat. So I always made sure I was going to win. I know when to win. I ain't want to win too many times back to back. Somebody might get suspicious. But I always had an ace in the hole. Amen. My boys, my boys don't like to play cards with me. They say, Daddy, you I'll make sure you ain't dealing from the bottom of the deck. If I was to do it, you wouldn't see it no way. Amen. No, cards is not a sin, y'all. It's what you do with cards to make it a sin. Amen. Sex ain't a sin either if you do it right, is it? Oh, yeah. Amen. It's a whole lot of thing for it's a whole lot of folk thing folk make a sin. Long as you do it according to the Bible, it ain't no sin. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now all lying is sin. I don't know what y'all laughing about. Y'all, y'all brain always go the wrong direction. <laughs> That's a sin. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mark chapter 11, verse 20, verse 22. You got it? What does it say? Have faith in God. We got to have faith in God. Amen. Mm. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9 again. As I was telling you all this morning, uh, and I'm going to tell you again, we have to learn to believe that if you pray and something happened and you believe you did what God told you to do, you made the right decision. Y'all stop second guessing yourself. When you feel like you talked to God and God did something or did what you asked him or, or did what you thought you wanted him to do um, um, and you feel like God answered you, you made the right decision. Don't second guess yourself. Because when you go to second guessing yourself, you're going to diminish in your faith because you go to saying, did I do the right thing? Did you do what God said? If God tell you to speak to somebody and say such and such, say it. I don't care how they respond. That's irrelevant. You did what God said. You don't know what's going to happen and you don't know what would have happened had you not said anything. So you can't second guess yourself. I'm, I, I keep re reiterating this because that's the main way or the main thing that causes people to lose faith in God because we don't get what we want right away. We say, I should have done. Well, what make you think you would have got it faster had you gone that way? You have no proof. Amen. Lazarus was his friend. Amen. They came and told Jesus. Jesus waited four days to go and see about his friend. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That was his friend. It took him four days to go see about his friend. And when he got there, his friend was dead according to our belief and understanding. But Jesus said, he's not dead, he's sleeping. He's sleeping. Why? Because that was Jesus' friend. Jesus loved him. Jesus loves us, y'all. 
Y'all understand that? And if you do what he tell you, trust me, hallelujah, you're making the right decision. Don't second guess yourself. Amen. Matthew chapter 9. Let's start at verse 14. Chapter 9. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is that what I want? Yeah. No. Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay, verse 14. You got it? Let's read. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do ye and ye but thy and Jesus said unto them, But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man put it a piece of new cloth onto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up, take it from the garment, and the rent is made worth. Neither do men put a new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish, but they that put new wine into new bottles. Now, while he spake these things unto them, behold, there were a certain ruler and a worshiper him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him. And so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came before behind him and touched the hem of his garment. And she said within herself, If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I don't have to talk to him. He don't have to see me. He don't have to come and lay hands on me and go through gyrations. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. Come on, read that again. What verse was that? 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. Come on, verse 22. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, and the woman was made whole from that, that very, hallelujah, the woman was made whole that very hour. Listen, have faith in God. God can heal you right now. Hallelujah. We, listen, Jesus, remember I read this morning where Jesus said, Father, now I'm talking to you for the sake of them, but I really don't have to talk to you because I know you're going to do whatever I say. Listen, what you need to understand, if you got faith in God, you don't have to go through a lot of uh, commotions and, and, and all of this stuff that people like to put you through to get you to do. All you need is faith. She said, if I could just touch the hem, I don't need to touch his arm. I don't need him to lay hands on me. I don't need him to see me. I don't need him to pray no long prayer on me. I just need to touch the hem of his garment. In other words, I, if I got to sneak up on him and I got to get close to the dirt, just listen, it, I don't care what people are going to say about it. I stink. I got blood running out of me. And it's been running for 12 years and I got enough of it. So I really don't care what y'all think about me but I got faith that if I could just touch the hem of God's garment I'm going to be fine and I really don't care how y'all feel about it hallelujah because a woman with an issue of blood back in those days was outcast because you stink amen y'all women know how you smell when that time comes y'all stink now she's been bleeding for 
12 years continuously. Listen, she don't care what nobody say. What stop folk from serving God because you were concerned about what folks going to say about you. Hallelujah. But this woman did not care. Why? Because I got faith in God. I done tried the medicine. I done tried the doctor. Ain't nothing working. Hallelujah. Now I'm trying to let, listen, I tried alcohol. I tried drugs. I tried women. I tried other countries. I tried this. But until I came to Jesus, until I put my faith in God, nothing worked right. I, and I don't care what folks say about how I preach and what I preach, what I stand for. Listen, I touched the hem of God's garment and I've been made whole ever since. So I really don't care how you think. Hallelujah. This woman said, I need some help. Maybe y'all don't need help. That's why y'all can't get nothing from God because you don't have the faith. Listen, listen, it's time for us to have faith in God and stop trusting folks. Folks can't help you do nothing. Amen. Come on. Verse 23 again, he said, well, and when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrel and the people making a noise, he said unto them, but the maid is not dead, but she doing what? Now he, listen, he's on his way to do one thing and heal the woman with issue of blood and go in there and going to raise up this daughter. Hallelujah. Listen, what I'm trying to get you, have faith in God. The man said, Lord, I need your help. Listen, y'all come to church day after day after day asking God for help and you don't want to take what he tells you to do. Listen, if you ain't going to do what he tells you to do, why you keep coming to him? What, what do you want him to do? You want, you want him to come down here and lay hands on you and pray for you and stomp and, and yell and spit in your face and, then, and that'll make you do right? When, if that's what we need to do right? Why can't we just ask God for something and then we believe we got it? Come on, go to Isaiah chapter 55. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We need, we need to stop this. We just need to know. I asked God, I got it. That very hour. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know what else it means? In that very hour is when it was complete. She started drying up the very moment, but it wasn't complete until the hour was up. Amen. By the time the hour was up, she was taking the pass. In her case, the rags, because they didn't have pass back then. She was taking the rags off her, because she saw they was getting less and less bloody. And she, listen, y'all want to come and ask God for something and expect it right now. God ain't no microwave. Hallelujah. He ain't going to pop your corn right now. Hallelujah. You're going to have to go and do it the old-fashioned way, put it in a skillet with some butter, and wait an hour before it get hot enough to get your first kernel to pop up. Hallelujah. But everybody want things done right now. It don't happen like that over here. God say, I might let you die. That's what he did to Lazarus, and that was his friend. Oh, hallelujah. So if you his friend, he might let you die before he bring you back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Chapter 55, verse 11. What does it say? Verse 10. So you can understand what he's talking about. Verse 10 says what? For as the rain and the snow from heaven and return it from thither, but water the earth and make it, and that it may give seed. Listen, when it rains, it rains and it waters everything. Amen. And then the sun comes along and takes the water and it evaporates and goes back to the clouds. Y'all know that? Water, when it hit the dirt and you wonder why it get dry, because the sun took it back. Amen. But it went down and it stayed there long enough to water that plant. It went down. It came out of the clouds. Went down, watered the plant. When it got soaking wet, the sun's job is to get it back up to the cloud. So the sun sucked it back up, and it went back up to the heaven. Amen. And it's going to sit there until it's time to do it again. What are you saying, preacher? Read the next verse. Hallelujah. Verse 11, verse 12 says, uh, 11 says what? God said, that's the way my word is. It's going to come out of my mouth. It's going to cut you up. It's going to direct you. And then after you got it in your heart, it's going to disappear and come back up to me. And I'm going to preach it to you again. The rain keep on raining. Listen, where do you think the water come from? The same water that fell from the beginning of time is still falling. God said, I ain't got to make no more. Because every time it rains, I take it back. Every, but it does what it's supposed to do. Come on, verse 11 from the top. Read it again. So shall that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall but it shall 
which I plead, and it shall. Oh, hallelujah. Every time it rains, it helps a plant. It helps some grass. It helps a tree. But yet, it gets sucked back up, and it goes back to heaven. Knowing. But yet, how come that plant is doing better? Because it did what it was supposed to do. The water did. Amen? God said, that's the same with my word. Listen, hallelujah. When, you, when I get up here and preach, and I say what God said, it did what it was supposed to do. Let me tell you something else. All of y'all that get mad when I preach something, it was that's what it was supposed to do for you, make you mad. Amen. But you thought it was the day going to make you happy. No, today it was to make you mad. It did what it was supposed to do. So when you walk out of here and you wonder why you're mad, because today God said you're going to get mad. Hallelujah. And I'm going to give you the word. It's going to make you mad. And then you're going to walk out of here. But it did what it was supposed to do. Hallelujah. You come back next week. I preach that same word. When you stop, when you stop your line, I preach that same word again. But this time it make you happy. Why? Oh, hallelujah. Because it made you mad enough to stop your lying. It did what it was supposed to do. Oh, hallelujah. So I can preach it again. And the next time I preach it, if you slipping me back in line, it's going to make you mad again. That's what, oh, hallelujah. That's what it's supposed to do. Make you mad so you can come back, hear it again, and then next time you're going to grow. But you don't realize every time it makes you mad, you're still growing. Oh, hallelujah. You're still growing. You just don't like the way you're growing. Hallelujah. But you're growing because you done found out every time I go to church, that preacher make me mad. But he's right. He's right. I don't like it, but he's right. Hallelujah. Listen, hallelujah. And then one day you're going to wake up and going to say, I appreciate that preacher because that preacher keep correcting me. He won't let me get away with, oh, hallelujah. God say, God say, that's what the word is supposed to do. Listen, so when y'all get these little, little attitudes, I love them. Remember I told you when you look at me cross-eyed, you make me preach harder. Because God has said, John, they ain't get it. Listen, so, so, so this what, that, that's what God do. See, God give you a little shower. And then you get an attitude. God said, now thunder. And that don't get him. He said, give him a hurricane. Hallelujah. And he said, that don't get him. Give him some rain and wind and put them in a whirlwind. Make them so mad that they walk out of here with rocks in their jaw and backslide. And then when they backslide, they find out that that preacher told me what was right. Because now I'm out here being a whore again. All because I got mad. But the word is still in you. You still know what you heard. And when you decide to do right, you coming right back. You coming right back. And the word, you walk in the door, the word is waiting on you to tell you, I told you not to backslide. I told you what's going to happen. You get cut again. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to cut you again because that's what it's supposed to do. But all of us that's living right, we glad to hear the word because that's what, we, that's what it's supposed to do for us because we're all different. We all are in a state. So this is what I'm trying to get you to see. God say, when you do what I tell you to do, you're going to be all right. Listen, you want the word to make you happy? Stop getting an attitude. But if you don't stop getting an attitude, it's going to make you mad. Whatever state you're in, that's what it's going to do to you. So you make the decision. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I love it. I love it. Did we read all of that? Verse 11 again from the top. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not... <laughs> And it shall prosper. It, God said it's going to prosper. One thing about the word of God. It, make you, it does its job every time. Listen. Have a plant ever got water and didn't benefit from it? Every time it rains, that grass loves that water. It ain't never got water. I don't want no water. It sucks it up real bad. And then God said that's enough sun. Get it back. The sun get hot and suck it back up. Go back up to the cloud. The clouds hold it until Jesus say release it again. It rains again. Hallelujah. And then when they get enough, God says suck it back up. 
But every time it go down, that plant benefits from it, don't it? Holly, but it's the same water. Listen, the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It does not change. Hallelujah. It's going to do what it's set out to do. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go to 2 Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians. I'm trying to show you something. Listen, have faith in God. Have faith in God. You got a problem. You got a problem. And you don't know what your problem is. That's what the word is going to do. Show you what your problem is. Well, Lord, I need help. See, some of us get to the point we don't want to admit what we need help in. I need help. Lord, I need help. Lord, I can't seem to do right. Okay, now, wait a minute. You prayed in your living room or your bedroom last night or night before or a week ago or a month ago. And you said you was having problems living right. Right? So you saying, I need help. You don't know what you need to hear. That's why God sent a preacher. Amen. The preacher, or should I say the pastor, is here to perfect you. Now, you done already admitted you got a problem. Obviously, you don't know the solution. So you come to church and you get your solution. But it wasn't what you thought. You thought the problem was A, and your problem is A five years ago. You done forgot all about it. But God is going to bring you back up to your remembrance. Amen. So the word is going to do what it's supposed to do. You remember, you the one made the prayer. You the one said you love God. You the one came to church to get some help. And God said he loved you. Do you really think he's going to bring you here and deceive you? He, do you really think you're going to pray, 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 and going to come to church and the preacher going to tell you something you don't want to hear? Let me look at, let me scan the phases. Just about everybody in here that I know got the Holy Ghost. Do y'all want me to preach about how to get the Holy Ghost? Maybe y'all want me to preach that. Because you got that already, so why should I preach it? I'm going to preach something where you're going wrong at. You done went right. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to tell you to turn another way and you're already going the right direction. I'm going to tell you to look out for that bump that's in the road that you cannot see. I'm going to tell you how to get over that bump in the road. I'm going to tell you how to hit that pothole so you don't tear your car up. I'm gonna, oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you how to get where you're going because that's your problem. You're going somewhere and don't know how to get there. Not to mention you really don't know where it's at. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. What I say? Second Corinthians. Let me tell you this. I told you this this morning. And I want to tell you again. Complaining limits your faith. When you complain, you're limiting your faith. You got to stop complaining. You have to stop complaining. You are where God wants you to be. If you wasn't saved, you will be where the devil wants you to be. Amen. If you were living like a sinner, you will be where the devil wants you to be. But you say you want to be saved, don't you? Hallelujah. Do you think you can get to heaven without being corrected? Do you think? Because maybe you can. Now, if you can, I need to read that scripture. I'm going to go back to shooting dice. I'm going to pull out my, my, my pity pack. Y'all don't know nothing about them card games, do you? Mother Donna, you know something about pity pack. Look at her. Like you don't remember. You know, you know you used, to, you used to play pity pat. Come on. Hallelujah. But listen, if, if, if I know that I'm not supposed to do it, I can't do it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So complaining limits your faith. Stop complaining. Stop it. It ain't going to do you no good. It's going to make you start doubting God. That's that when, you, when I say you're second guessing yourself. I don't second guess myself. Because I believe God told me to do it. I'm doing it. I don't care what nobody say. Because if, if, if I allow you to make me think, well, maybe I'm going to mess up. Because today you telling me, and then the next day you telling me, the next day and the next day, what am I, when, when am I going to think for myself? Got me all confused. But pastor, I don't think you ought to preach that. You can think what you want. You ain't got to come to church. I'm a, you want me to tell you what I'm preaching so you can know when to stay home? <laughs> Hallelujah. He preaching on me. You just figured that out? Who you thought I was preaching on? Quint, I didn't, listen, you didn't come to church to hear me preach on Tony. You came to church for me to preach on you. And if I don't preach on you, you're going to have a problem. Because you're going to like, man, he didn't help me today. You might not come back. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you got to stop complaining. Stop complaining, y'all. 
Stop your murmuring, stop your complaining. I'm going to say it one more time. Stop your murmuring and stop your complaining. If you can just get over that hump, you'll be amazed the faith you can have. Thank you, Jesus. It's time for us to take a great leap of faith. I ain't, uh, listen, I, I'm, I'm tired of y'all taking these baby steps. <laughs> time for y'all to just go ahead on. Get to walking. Stop all this baby stuff. Y'all ain't no babies. Pass them on to four years old. Well, if you're four years old, then don't talk back to me. How old Nicole? Five. Five. Well, she talking back. Who is in four? Who in here four? Four years old. When she talks back to you, you're ready to knock her out, ain't you? So what you, what, are you so y'all gonna talk back to me? You're gonna talk back to your pastor that's 25 years old and you four, and you're gonna tell me. That's why y'all wonder why I scratch my head and look at you like you lost your mind. A four-year-old telling a 25-year-old what to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Time to take a great leap of faith. Time, it's time for you to stop it. I told Angela, time to get Sam out of them, them diapers. Put, the, put, some, put some shorts on there, brother. I can, he can come in there and, and shake my hand like a man, and I can say, go put that in the trash, and he walk right off knowing what I'm saying. Go all the way in the kitchen. He, wait a minute, how did you know? I didn't say kitchen, because he know. Well, if you know all of that, brother, it's time for you to come out them, them, them diapers. We're going to put some pants on you. Now, maybe you're going to bush on the floor a couple of times, but I bet you when it run down your leg two or three times, he's going to go like, mama, something ain't right about this, and then that's when he's going to understand, I got to get to the bathroom. Oh, but if you keep him in the diaper till he turns six, if I keep patting y'all on the back, okay, you only four. No, it's time to grow up. It's time to take a great leap of faith. It's, oh, hallelujah. Time for y'all to stop all of this. Y'all got a pastor that's telling you what to do. I know what to do. I've done it. Oh, hallelujah. And if I haven't done it, you ain't going to have to do it either. Because I, I, if I can't teach you, God ain't going to put it on you. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to go to new heights. Time for us to go to new heights. You understand? It's time for us to step out on some faith. What I'm trying, listen, it's time for us, it's enough with this baby stuff. I still got to come in here and tell y'all how to dress. Come on, give me a break. I should not have to preach you how to dress. But if you don't get it right, I'm going to preach it. I, I, I would love to preach. We stop preaching on y'all putting on the right clothes. I would really love to stop them type of sermon. But every time you break the rule, I'm going to get on you. Am I tired? You bet you I'm tired. But you ain't going to win. I'm going to preach about it as long as you break the rule. I'm going to preach about it. I don't care how mad you get. We're talking about leaps. Of time for us to grow up. All this whining and this stuff because I preach something about you. Listen, you the one made me preach it. And you wonder why I preach on you? Because <laughs> you doing it. You the one provoked me to preach it. And you wonder why I preached it? But ain't you doing it? Oh, hallelujah. Come on. It's time for us to grow progressively. What I'm trying to get you to see, listen, we, we're, I, I know some of y'all are four and three and five and six in the Lord, but there, there's something you ought to be doing. Listen, there should not, there should not, there should not, and I repeat, uh, uh, categorically, one of them fancy word folk like to say, y'all should not be gossiping and talking about putting one another down, not in this church, not in this church. Not in this church. I, I can't speak for other ones, but not in this church. And then you get, you don't want me to talk about it? Well, stop it. And I won't talk about it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, we ain't going to have no cliques in this church. I know it's a lot of family, 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 but I know when you get clickish too. I understand you're going to spend more time with your family, but I can understand. I can see when you done gone beyond that stage too. Hallelujah. Thank Listen, that can't happen over here. It's time for us to grow, y'all. It ain't about who you are. It's about who I am. It ain't, a, oh, hallelujah. 
what you do to me, Brother Beverly, has got no bearing on me getting to heaven. What you do to me bad bearings on you getting to heaven. So treat me any way you want to treat me. Because whenever you mistreat me, Beverly, you're making me live right. All that's going to do is make me know I got problems and I need to fix them. But I ain't looking at you crazy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What did I tell you to go? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. You got it? We going to heaven over here, y'all. Told y'all I got an ace in the hole. Amen. What did I say? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Read. What does it say? Therefore, we always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, as long as I'm on this earth, I'm not in the full presence of God. And I plan on being in his full presence. Amen. Come on. Verse 7 said what? But we walk by So, so when I say I'm in heaven, I'm speaking that because I believe I'm there. He says, speak those things as they are. I, I can never quote that scripture right. There you go. How you say it? That ain't the, that's a latter part. What's the first part? That's why I always get tongue-tied in. But y'all know what I'm trying to say. I'm in heaven. Then the Bible says, I'm in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And if I'm in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, I'm in Christ, right? I'm in the church, right? So I'm in heaven. When I'm in my car, I'm in Christ, right? I'm in heaven. When I'm at home, I'm in Christ, right? I'm in heaven. So I'm in heavenly places in Christ Jesus wherever I go. If I'm living right. Because if I go to the club, you can bet you I ain't in Christ at that point. If I go in the club dancing, if I'm drinking and whoremongering, I just stepped out of Christ. You can bet you I ain't in heaven. Let the rapture come. I bet you and I'm going to be left right there. Amen. So we walk by. And not by, verse 8, we are confident. I am confident that I would rather be out of here. So I know folks say, well, I, 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 hear, I hear preachers and people say things sometimes I just don't agree with. You know, tell me, well, y'all can say come now, but I ain't ready. I ain't telling that lie. Now, I think I'm ready. God may say I'm not ready, but then I, I, I'm not total in belief of that. I think he needs me here to help y'all get there. Amen? You can say I'm arrogant, wrong, or whatever you want. That's still the way I feel. Why? Because I know I don't wake up in the morning purposely to sin. I do not be, listen, I told them at the, at the, at the council when I was doing the seminar, y'all know what perfection is? Perfection is knowing your problems and willing to change them. Perfection is you knowing you got a problem and soon as it's exposed, you go change it. God said David was his friend, right? He said David is a man after my own heart. But David committed one of the raw sins in the whole Bible. But God said as soon as I told him what he did, he fell down on his knees and said, oh Lord, I'm sorry. Listen, that's what made David Perfect. He did not hide his sin. Y'all find out you got sin and want to hide them. Listen, that's why you're not perfect. What make you perfect is I know I got problems. Tell me what they are and I'll fix them. That's what make you perfect. Let me show you something. God is perfect, isn't he? But if he's so perfect, if he's so perfect, why in the world did he make Adam? Before the foundation of the world and knew Adam was going to sin and cause all this problem. Would a perfect God do that according to your definition of perfect? Think about it. Would he? He's, he's, he's sitting there with his own thought. You know what? I'm going to create man. I'm going to create an earth. And Adam going to sin. And man, he going to cause some problem. And I'm going to have to die. Folks going to be killing. Folks going to be just low down. And the devil just going to take over. Boom, I'm making it anyway. But you already know there's a flaw in your system. That's all right. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to, oh, hallelujah. And God said he's perfect, isn't he? So God said perfect is not what y'all think is perfect. Perfect is knowing you got a problem and say you're going to change it. What keep y'all from being perfect? You know your problem and instead of changing it, you don't even want to acknowledge. I ain't, I ain't got that. That ain't me. Why he talking about me? 
Why don't you say, I'm glad he's talking about me. I'm glad he's talking about because I need to get better. But see, y'all got this twisted version of what perfect is. It's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to come in these doors expecting to be what? The Bible said a pastor is there for to perfect you. I got to make you aware of your sin and then make you accept it and change it. Because if I don't tell you about it, how are you going to change it? And if I don't stay on you, you do you really think, do, do y'all really think y'all would live right if I stopped telling you about yourself? Y'all wouldn't do it. Y'all wouldn't. Because you ain't doing it while I'm telling you. <laughs> so you know you wouldn't do it if I stopped telling you. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Philippians chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad I'm saved. Glad I am saved. Saved to the B-O-N-E. As they say. Philippians. Apostolic to the bone too. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Philippians chapter 1 verse 23. What does it say? Come on now. Everybody not reading. Come on everybody. Y'all know y'all got to read. Now y'all know I'm going to say you to read. Y'all just turn to it and look up. Philippians chapter 1, verse 2, 3, 23. Read. What does it say? That's all. Not one time Paul ever say, I ain't ready. Paul said, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. He said it in Corinthians. Now he's saying it over here in Philippians. It's the same man talking. He said, I'm ready to get out of here. I'm in a bit twitch too. I don't know if I want to keep on helping y'all or get out of here. Yeah. Sound like he can tell God, come get him, huh? I'm in a bit twitch too. In other words, I can make a decision today. So that sound like what Paul's saying to me. I can make a decision today. Either get out of here or hang out with y'all a little bit longer. That sounds like somebody that got some faith. Amen. That sounds like somebody said, I can go home anytime I feel like it. I want some of that faith because I don't know if I'll stay in that betwixt. I think I say, God, get me out of here. Hallelujah. Come on, got another one for you. Psalm, Psalm 116. Hallelujah. Verse 15. Thank you, Jesus. I love being saved. I love it. I love it. Wouldn't change it, but nothing in the world. Listen, Jesus loves us, y'all. He loves his saints and his lo he loves his creation. Amen? Man, y'all through counting already? That means we didn't get enough money, saints. They counted that fast. Amen? That's all right. Y'all will bring it next Sunday. I ain't worried about it. Psalm 116. You got it? Verse 11. 116 verse 15, right. What does it say? Wait a minute, say that again. One more time. One more time. Oh, hallelujah. Precious. Come on. In the sight of the Lord is the, is the, is the, precious is the, precious is the, precious is the, so you think I don't want to die? I'm a saint. Not a Christian. I'm a saint. Precious. In other words, God said when I die, he grabs me real careful and brings me to his bosom. Oh, how, look at that. Yeah, but when you pick up a newborn baby... You pick up that baby real careful, don't you? You, 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 you take your hand and you put your hand under the baby's head and you, and, and you grab the leg and sometimes you be so nervous you, you, you get the shaking. And then they say, give me my baby back. You don't drop them. Because you're shaking too much. Because you know that baby is precious. Listen. Listen, we know a newborn baby can't do nothing for themselves, right? Well, God know we can't do nothing for ourselves. Do y'all know that? That's why when we fall dead 
or asleep, God say, I got to carry you into the bosom of Abraham because you don't know what you, oh, hallelujah. Read it again. Verse 15 said what? Precious is the sight of the Lord is the. And y'all afraid of dying. So because you're afraid of dying, you ain't got no faith. Amen. Listen, who in here knows somebody died from starvation? Nobody. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all don't, don't know nothing about no starvation. And y'all go to complain because y'all can't eat something. You ain't never seen nobody die from starvation. Not one time in your life. Amen. You ain't never seen nobody die from not having some liquids. Whether it be water, juice, coffee, tea, or something. And then y'all get to complaining because you don't have no money to buy what? Y'all complaining because y'all can't buy some, some steak or something. Don't y'all, you, you got top ramen in your, in, your, in your cabinet. Do you know some folk will kill for a box of that top ramen you got? And you complaining? Cut you some vegetables up. Go in and eat some of them vegetables that you let die because you don't like vegetables. I don't like onions and I don't like bell peppers and I don't like squash and I don't like tomatoes and I don't like celery and I don't like, listen, go in and cut some of that stuff up you don't like that's good for you and put it in that top ramen and put some salt and pepper on it and you watch how good it tastes. Somebody say, how you know I've been there? When you don't have nothing to eat, but I can make a meal out of vegetables. Uh, and that's the best thing for us. In. And y'all complaining? And folks would love to get some of the food y'all throw in the trash. What you're trying to say, complaining limits your faith. Amen. You can walk in there and say, oh man, honey, we, we ain't got no chicken, but that's all right. And my wife done been there. So, honey, we don't have, man, honey, we don't have no meat and all we know. That's all right. Let's cut some potatoes and put some onions in there and put some sauce or something on it and sit there and eat. You forgot all about no meat. Do y'all know one time, it been, it been so long before we ate some meat, we weren't even interested in buying meat when we had money. We forgot to buy meat when we started getting money because we hadn't ate none in so long because we know we couldn't, oh, hallelujah. What you trying to say? I know how it feel when you can't have what you want, but you don't complain about it. Because when you complain, it's your faith. God say, you think you're going to die because you don't eat no chicken? You think you're going to die because you don't have no pasta? You think you're going to die because you don't have no Coca-Cola? Because that's what y'all complain about. Y'all ain't complaining about not having no food. Y'all complain about having particular food. And God said, you think you're going to die because you can't go to the movies? I ain't got no money. I ain't never got no money to have no fun. Ain't that what you say? You complain because you can't go out and sin? You complain because you can't go buy another dress or a pair of shoes or a suit and you can't even wear all of those in your closet? And then you complaining. So what are you complaining about? Look at some of them clothes you ain't wore but one time. Why don't you take that jacket and match it with those pants, men, women. Y'all ain't got no business with no pants. Take that jacket and match it with that skirt. And you got your whole new outfit. But instead, you complaining because you can't go buy a new white suit. And you got two of them. Because <laughs> I'm one of them. I've been there. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We complain. It restricts. Listen, when you stop complaining, your faith will grow. I'm trying to have faith in God. When God wants you to have something, it's going to be all right. Come on, let's look at another scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Thank you, Jesus. Most time we buy meat for them boys. Me and my wife will break out some vegetables and salt them and, and put them over something and the boys come in there. What y'all eat? We say vegetable over to our side. <laughs> we in there eating good 
And they, I don't want none of that. We, well, we thought we were doing great. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's our fault. We done spoiled them. Just like God done spoiled us. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love preaching. I love, I love making us just see the reality of what we do every day. And for some reason, we just don't seem to see it. But it's in our, it's in our face every day. But for some reason, we, we, we just blind ourselves. I don't, I don't think all that. Okay. Keep on thinking that. Keep on thinking. Hallelujah. Let me read some notes. Did I read all my notes? Let me see. I love the, the famous one. Complaining limits your faith. When I told you this morning, God that created heavens and earth say it's time for John to take a rest. Amen. Because y'all know what? When you wake up in glory, you go back to work. Don't y'all know we're going to judge angels? We ain't going to just be up there praising God. We're going to be on, we're going we gonna to have a job. We're going to be on duty. But guess what? If you work for God down here, when you get up there, working is a piece of cake. See, some of y'all ain't going to never get that job. Some of y'all ain't getting promoted. Some of y'all getting demoted. That's another sermon. I, I won't, I won't. Verse 6, what does it say? Psalm, he was talking about all of the people being saved. He said, but Psalm done fallen up. Sleep. That means some, as we interpret it, is dead. No, they going to sleep. Listen, these, some of these, these, these old preachers, they done fell asleep. They done fell asleep. Remind me to tell you something about Bishop Paddock, so I don't forget. Bishop Paddock was a great preacher, but he done fell asleep. He ain't dead, he sleep. Taking, he taking a good rest. Bishop Ben done fell asleep. Carson then fell asleep. Bowden then fell asleep. Paul, Peter, James, John, Thaddeus, all of these guys, Barnabas then fell asleep. Amen. The only, the only one that's awake and still working is Jesus. That's, that's what a big brother does, ain't it? See, a big brother know he got to keep house. So he let everybody take a nap till mom and daddy come home. He's sitting there waiting for mom and daddy to get in the house because he's keeping God. Hallelujah. Listen, our big brother is keeping God. He know, hallelujah, the rest are, everybody else is sleeping but Jesus. Jesus is the only one awake. Uh, he's getting the house ready. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But most of all of the saints that have gone before us fell asleep. Precious. When that newborn baby fall asleep, what do we do? We pick them up. And then you, you, you take them and you hold them. And, and, and when they're really small, you lay them in your arm. That way the spine and everything is straight. And then you lay them down head first and you make sure you take those down. Why? But you can't hurt a newborn baby back no way because it ain't nothing yet. But we don't know that. We make a sure answer. Why? Because he's precious. She's a precious little baby. God said, when y'all die, listen, y'all are precious. Don't y'all know that if you die serving God, listen, you go to heaven? Why are you worried about what's going to happen because you living right? Come on. Got another one for you. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Precious. 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 Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing being saved. It's a wonderful thing being saved and living right. But see, when you don't live right, when you don't live right, 
you, 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 you can't walk around uh, mad at the pastor. That's crazy. You come to church mad at the pastor. I can't work out of sense that way. You come to church mad at me, and you want to hear me preach, but you're mad at me. So what, what's going to happen? You ain't going to hear nothing I say, right? Hey, hallelujah. Let me, let me put it this way. Why are you going to come to church mad at God? Wait, what, what, what benefit is that? You come to church and you got an attitude with God. I'm going to church. You know, I don't think I ought to be there no way because all he does is preach on me. Okay, now, so who's preaching? Is it Jesus preaching or John preaching? Okay, now, you got you to gotta say, because if it's John preaching, you got every right to be mad. But if it's Jesus preaching, who you mad at? And nobody never came in here, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of Jesus beating me over the head. He always picking on me. You come in here and say, I'm tired of John or the pastor beating you over the head. Well, let, me, let, me see, let me hear you say Jesus one time beating you over the head. You ain't going to say that because you know that's dumb. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's all right. I love it. And I ain't taking nothing back. H have I taken anything back since I've been preaching to you, Sheila? I'm, I'm just wondering. I want to know if I took anything back so I can correct that. Amen. I ain't taking nothing back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's right, y'all. Have faith in God. All God wants to do is get us right. Why is that a problem? If you know you're breaking a rule, you don't want God to tell you? Supposing the law didn't stop nobody from speeding. Some of y'all wouldn't even get on the road. <laughs> Amen. Y'all scared when y'all see somebody pull up behind you fan. Look at that fool. Let me get out their way. Don't you know he did that to make you get out of his way? He ain't going to run into you. But he know I'm going to scare you. You move. They run. They gone. Laugh. Look at that fool there. I know I can scare him. Why you know that? Because I do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, but I ain't scared of nobody. You can run up behind me all you want. They do that to me, I hit my brakes. So you ain't scared, now hit me. You ain't going to hit me. You're trying to scare me. You can't scare me. Listen, that's what the devil does. The devil try to scare you. You know if you don't get this, you know you're going to get kicked out. You get the panic game. No, put me out. Come on, let me see you put me out, Satan. Let me see you shut my mouth, Satan. Come on, do it. You that bad? Let me see you. Do it, do it, do it. He ain't shut my mouth yet. 14 years he ain't shed it because I don't believe he can do it. He can do it if God tell him. If God tell him, no matter what I would have done, my mouth was going to be shut. Because Satan can't shut my mouth, but I can shut his. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, me, me and Angela was talking. Me and Angela was talking after the message on Sunday. And I never looked at the message this way. She said, Pastor, you exposed. She, well, she said, God. She said, God exposed the devil today. Last Sunday message. She said, God exposed the devil today. The devil walked out of here mad, y'all, because he know I can't talk about nobody no more at that church. But he, it's kind of like he walked out mad, but I'm coming back. Y'all ain't through with me because the Bible said he left Jesus and said for a season, meaning I'm coming back. I lost today, but I ain't losing tomorrow. Listen, y'all got to know how to tell the devil, leave you alone. You can't make me do this no more. But, it, but instead, people get the wrong impression and go the wrong direction. Listen, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What are you talking about? Listen, have faith in God. What that got to do with having faith in God? No matter what come my way, it won't affect me. But when you don't have faith in God, you think you can solve your problem. Listen, you can't solve your problems. Stop, stop, stop thinking you can. You can't. Amen? First Thessalonians chapter 4. I love being saved. Hallelujah. I love being saved. Get the devil out of your life. Every sin that you have stopped, don't you feel good about it? Have anybody quit a sin that they regret? 
Maybe, and let me know so I can preach on it some more and show you how, how, how beneficial you are by not doing that. I mean, because maybe you really don't understand how beneficial you've been or how things have gotten better for you because you don't do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, verse 13, he said what? But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are that ye sorrow not. You mean to tell me we go to the funeral of a saint and cry and want to jump in the casket. You know, I get them, oh, thank you. Ah. If I ever see one of you saints doing that over another saint, I'm going to embarrass you. We all, we all got folks in our family that do it. They want to jump in the cat. We ought to put them in there and close the lid. I bet you they won't do, they won't do that no more. Listen, they ain't got no hope. We got a hope beyond the grave, y'all. So Mother Laverne, if I see you in the casket, you know what I'm going to say? How did she beat me out of here? I've been working hard. She ain't preached four times and six times a month. She ain't preached since I've known her. And she tired and God and took her home. Here I am, barely breathing sometimes. And I can't fall. When you, Lord, when, when can I fall asleep? I'm still mad at Mother Ethel. Come here for what? A year and a half and going to heaven. And I'm still here stomping and carrying on. Listen, I'm tired too, Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. What you trying to say? Listen, I miss them. Vicki Collins, I miss her to this day. But guess what? All they doing is... God say they done worked hard, John. And I'm trying to figure out, I thought I was working hard too. I'm not crying because I don't have no hope. I'm just ready to go like they went. But we spend, listen, we are saints. We are saints. All they doing is sleeping. That's all they doing. And, we, and then you, you, you get these, these folk that really ain't say, well, they in the presence of the Lord. And then I read their obituary. And I don't see no way in there where they had a church home. They went to church. They did nothing for Jesus. But they really think they're going up there to be in a house that Jesus built for them that worked for him. And they ain't did nothing. You really think they in that house? They ain't put a dime in the church, but they in the house? I ain't trying to make you laugh. I'm just showing you. Listen, we got a hope. Somebody done deceived these folk. They ain't going nowhere. Listen, we got a hope beyond the grave. What you afraid about? Oh, hallelujah. Did we read all of that? Come on. Let's go back. We're doing good. We're doing good. Mark chapter 11. Hallelujah. Do y'all feel y'all got a hope beyond the grave? Yeah. Then why are you sad? Why are you complaining? Why are you worried? What's the problem? What's the problem? Thank you, Jesus. What's the problem? We're going to heaven. And you worried about what? Supposing the rapture was coming tomorrow at 12.01, 42 seconds. Just supposing. And you complain about something. Do you think you're going to heaven or do you think you're going to miss out? So if you feel you're going to miss out, then how do you know it's not going to happen in 20 minutes from now? Stop the complaining. When you complain, you restrict, you limit your faith. Because the more you complain, the better you get at it. The better you get at it, the more you find fault with everything. Amen? Don't be afraid of nothing. Amen? It's nothing to be afraid of. If God control you, he control that dog that's coming up the street. You understand? If God control you, he control that pilot that's in that plane that's flying it because one of his precious saints is on the plane. You understand? When I get on a plane, I don't have nothing to worry about. And I don't even get up there praying for the pilot. Because God already knew I'm going to be on this plane. And I'm precious. Amen. 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 He said we are a royal priesthood. Amen. You get folks on there. Lord bless them. Make sure. Listen, I, you can pray that. I'm like Jesus. Lord, I know you hear me all the time. But since they don't believe that you hear me, for the sake of them, Lord, bless the pilot. I already know you got me covered. 
because you said no weapon formed against me going to prosper. If I die, I'm precious. You're going to pick me up and carry me. And if I get injured, you're going to take me to the hospital and get me better. Whatever happened to me, you're going to fix me up. Because what? I am your child and you love me. Because if you can raise Lazarus, if you can raise the dead, you can show protect me from hitting the ground. Hallelujah. Do y'all understand? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. I don't need no doctor to tell me they got to take something to make me better. I can say, Lord, what you going to do about this? Am I going to die with this? Or am I going to live with this or what? Because I ain't, they ain't cutting me. So you better make a decision, Lord, what's going to happen? Because my decision is already made. I'm dying with it. Amen? We got to get that kind of faith. That's what I mean about it's time for us to take great leaps of faith. It's time for us to go to new height. It's time for us to live. I tell you, God told me to go back to the old way of teaching. So when I hear people telling me we got to do something different, I disagree with that. I know what my God told me. Now, maybe he didn't tell all of these other preachers. I don't know. But I know what he told John Fulton Portis. We got to go back to the old way. Listen, let's shut the hospitals down. We don't need them. We need Jesus. Amen. You sick, you come in, let me pray for you. If I'm not around, you get Brother James. Amen. Listen, you don't have to go to the doctor. And then you say, well, it ain't getting no better. That woman, it's your blood, didn't dry up till 24 hours. I mean, one hour. Amen. He said, in the same hour. Hallelujah. Just because you don't see the results today, don't mean you're going to see the results tomorrow. Don't mean you won't see the results the next day. But the fact is, you still will see the result. When he cursed that tree, they walked past that tree, it was still living good. When they came back the next day, the tree was gone. Hallelujah. Sometimes he do it lickety split and sometimes he take 24 hour sometimes he take 14 years sometimes he take 20 years but nevertheless what you're gonna do I'm gonna have faith in God I'm not gonna lose my faith because it don't come to it because I don't get it in a microwave version God gonna take care of me listen God gonna take care of you but you the one got to have the faith Amen. If you don't have the faith, listen, he ain't going to take care of you. Because as he told them, according to thy faith, let it be done. Amen. If you're walking around and you're afraid to take great leaps of faith, you're going to stay where you are. I don't care how much faith I preach, you're going to stay right where you are because you're not ready to take no great leaps of faith. Amen. If you're not ready to grow, how did I word it here? If you're not ready to take new heights, wherever you are in Christ, step it up. Step it up. Say, say you're climbing up a ladder, so to speak. Say you're on step number three. You, you ever, I know men do it all the time. I don't know about women. Sometimes we in a hurry, we skip a step when we go up the ladder, don't we? Let's skip, let's, let's skip about three steps and get up a little higher. Amen. Let's take great leaps of faith. Amen. Because God say, I never leave you nor forsake you so why are you worried do you believe him do you believe that because if you don't believe that then you're going to stay where you are amen if God tell you to do something come on verse 22 he said what well, chapter 12 a book of Mark I mean chapter 11 book of Mark verse 22 say what and Jesus verse 23 for verily I say unto you that whatsoever and be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not and shall not doubt not in your mind in your heart and shall not doubt in your heart what happened shall come to pass it may not come to pass today but that doesn't mean it's not coming to pass tomorrow it may not come to pass tomorrow, but that does not mean it's not coming to pass next week. Amen. God have put me in so many tight spots. Seem like there just ain't no way out. But I've learned that whatsoever state I'm in to shut my mouth. Be content. That's what that means. Shut your mouth. Amen. Because when you content, do you complain? See, y'all don't like it when I put it in your term because when you're content, you don't complain. 
You ever, ate, you ever much as you like to eat? When you done ate as much as you want, do you say anything? But as long as you still hungry, baby, baby, give me that. Let me have some of that. But as soon as you get enough, he quiet as a mouse, ain't he seen it? Because he content. His mouth is closed. So God say, having food and raiment, shut up. You got food, right? You got clothes, right? That's what Raymond is. So what are you complaining about? He never said I'm going to give you no steaks. He never said you're going to have a freezer full of food, refrigerator full of food, cabinet full of food. You got some food, right? Nobody in here is starving. Everybody in here overweight, including you, Beverly. Everybody overweight. So I don't understand what are you complaining about. There's no need to complain. Because when you start complaining about what you don't have, you neglect to see what you do have. And you don't realize that you got Jesus Christ. You got everything that you need to survive in this world, but yet you feel like I need a new pair of shoes. And so it causes you to not see that you already got five pair already in there. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So therefore, have faith in God. Come on, let's everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.